Topics that we will cover up in this video are common methods of S object type class, creating S object using record ID, child relationship class and its methods, getting child relationships of an S object, record type info class and its methods, getting record types of an S object, getting all S objects of an or and creating S object type dynamically. So without wasting any time further, let's proceed with the video. Some common methods of S object type class are get describe, new S object, new S object using an ID as a parameter. Now get describe we have already discussed in the previous video. Here we will talk about the new S object method with both the versions. There is one child relationship class available in the schema namespace and these are some common methods of the child relationship class. Schema namespace also provides us record type info class and these are some common methods of the record type info class. There is a schema class also available and schema class contains a get global describe method. We can take help of this method to create a subject type dynamically. So it's pretty much of talk and now it's time to see the things practically. Hey guys, welcome to the practical session of object info using schema part 2. In the part 1, we have seen different methods of describe as object result class. Here in this video, we are going to see some more methods of the same class. But before that, let me show you three different methods of S object type. So in the previous class, we have seen one method of S object type, which is get describe, which actually give the metadata description, which we have used something like this. So here you can see we are calling get describe method of S object type and getting the metadata description of the account object. In case if we want to create a new S object, we can use a new S object method of S object type. Now how to do that, here we can simply mention new s object and this will create a new object of this account object type. But the point of catch here is the new object that will be created will be a generic object. So we can hold it in an s object variable only. Now then after you can certainly use the put method and assign any value if you want. And if I'm going to print this and clicking on execute will definitely create an account object and will assign name field of that account object. Now as I told you the point of catch over here is this will not create a specific object. For example if I try to create account object like this definitely I won't get the result. It will throw me an exception because this new s object method creates a generic s object variable. Now definitely if you want you can typecast it as well but basically it is used in those situations where we need a generic s object where we don't know in advance what type of specific s object we are creating. There is one more version of new s object where we actually pass the record id. So if you are having a record id then you can create an object of it using this new s object. So let me show you that with help of a class. So here I created a create object class and I'm creating a method over here name as create and in this method I will pass a record id. Now with this record id we can get the s object type and then after we can create an object of it. So the process to do that is you can get the s object type of a specific record id. If it is an id type you can call get s object type method. Now this get s object type returns s object type as a data type and on s object type we can call this new s object method with a record id now this will create an object of this specific record but here also it will create a generic s object variable and after that you can certainly use the put method to assign any value if you want but right now i am just printing it now when we will call this create object method, if we will pass a record ID of account, this will be an account record object. If we will pass of a contact, this will be a contact record object and so on and so forth. So let me show you that. But before that, let me change the method to create itself. Otherwise, it will be quite confusing. Now I will pass the class name dot the create method and inside the create method, I will pass a record ID. So let's go to our org and fetch a record ID of account. So I'm selecting any specific account and copying the record ID of it and passing it here in the create method. And now let me execute this. So here you can see it created an account object. And in case if I take a contact record ID, let's take this one and pass a contact record ID over here. This is going to create a contact object. So basically this new S object method is handy in situation where we want to create an object through a record ID. Now let me create one more method over here. 
Now this method is actually talking about a specific method of describe as object result class. Now this method is used to get all the child relationships of that specific object. So let me name the method as get childs and here I will pass and here first of all I am going to fetch the description of account. So account dot as object type dot get describe. I am holding the description in describe as object result and with this result I can certainly call a method known as get child relationships. Now this method actually returns an object of a class child relationship. So there is a child relationship class. This will return an object of it. In fact, this will return list of child relationship. So let me create a list of child relationship. So when I'm going to call the get child's method, it will take the metadata description of account. And then from that metadata description, it will get all the child relationship fields. And those relationships will be hold here in the list of child relationship. Now child relationship class is having certain methods which I'm going to use here. So for that, I'm going to iterate over this list first. So each element of the list is nothing but child relationship itself. And then I'm going to call all those methods of the child relationship class. So let me just call those methods. So these are the different methods of child relationship class. Get child as object tells us the name of the child as object of the current object. So the current object is account. That will tell us the name of the child as object. Get field will tell us the name of the field which is present on the child object. Relationship name will give us the name of the relationship. Is cascade delete will let us know in true or false whether cascade delete is enabled for that field or not. Similarly, is restricted delete will tell us whether restricted delete is true or false. So let me execute this and show you the output. So here I am going to call the get child's method of the create object class. And let me click on execute. So here you can see it is telling us the child as object name. For example, there will be a child as object known as contact over here. So let me just show you. Here you can see. So contact is there. So let's see contact and opportunity only and let's not focus on all of them. Get child as object will return us as object type. So we have to type cast it into string. And similarly, we can check for opportunity. So I'm going to show all these details if it is contact or if it is opportunity. So here you can see it is showing these two childs only where contact is a child object and opportunity is a child object. In case of contact, the field name on contact is account ID and the relationship name is contacts itself. For opportunity, the field name is account ID and the relationship name is opportunities. For both of them, cascade delete is true and for both of them, restricted delete is false. Because of this cascade delete is true, whenever you are deleting an account, the related contact and the related opportunity also gets deleted. But these are the different methods of child relationship class that you can use. There is one more class that we are going to understand today, which is record type info class. We can know the record type info of a specific object and for that I'm going to create few record types on accounts uh, and I'm just modifying this method name as well get account childs definitely if you will change the object it will tell you the childs of other objects as well now I'm going to know the record type of account so I'm creating a method over here with name get account record types so first I have taken the metadata description of account and from this I can know the record type info there is a method of describe as object result. The method name is get record type infos. So if we will call that method over here, it is going to return us a list of record type info class. So here I created a list of record type info and I'm calling the get record type infos on the metadata description of account, which will let me know various record types of accounts, which will be, which will come here in the list of record type info. Now we are going to talk about some of the methods of record type info class. But before that, let's go to our org and create few record type of account. So here we are on the account object manager. Now let's click on the record types and let's click on new and let's create record types over here. So now basically there are three record types. First one is master, which is the default record type as well. And it is active. Second one is sample one and third one is sample two, which is not active right now. So these record type information we will be able to fetch over there in our code. So let's try to do that. So here when we are calling the get record type infos on account metadata, we will get those three record types over here. Now let's iterate over it and try to work with those methods of the record type info class. 
here I'm iterating over this record type infos list and let me use those methods first and then I will let you know about it. So these are the methods get record type ID returns the record type ID of that specific record type get name returns the name of the record type get developer name returns the developer name of the record type is active returns whether that record type is active or not is available returns true or false whether that record type is available for the current logged in user is default record mapping returns whether it is a default record type mapping or not for that currently logged in user and is master returns whether it is a master record type or not so let me call this method and see the output of the various record type of the account so let me click on execute so here you can see different record types information it is showing two master now one of them is created by us and one of them is by default created the one which is by default created for that it will be is master so is master will be true for the default master record type for any s object but if you create a record type even if you gave it a name as master the is master will be false for it so the first one over here is the record type that we have created let's proceed ahead the name of the record type and the developer name is shown over there name is the name that you have given developer name is actually the api name is active is showing true for master and for sample one because we made all of them as active but sample 2 is inactive that's why is active is returning false for it is available is true because we made it available is default is true for master because we made it default for sample 1 it is not default hence its default is false and for sample 2 as well as for the default master we haven't made any one of them as default that's why they are not default only one of them can be the default record type so that's how you can come to know about the various information of the various record types of a specific object and these are the various methods of the record type info class that you can use so in the schema namespace there is a schema class which is having a get global describe method now this get global describe method returns us a map and this map will contains a string and an s object type now basically this string which is the key is nothing but the name of the object and it also returns the s object type of that specific object so here what i'm doing i'm just iterating over this key so if i'm going to execute this it's going to tell me the name of all the objects that is existing in my org all the standard and all the custom objects so with the help of get global describe you can actually come to know about all the objects in your org and then from this map if you pass the key you can get information of a specific s object it will return you a specific s object type and then with that specific s object type you if you want to know the metadata description of that you can certainly do it now you might have seen one method which i recently created get account childs which is giving me the child information of accounts but if i want i can create a method in which i will pass an object name and according to the name of the object it will get the description of that object and it will tell us the child name of that object and it will tell us the child name of that object so let me quickly create that so here you can see here in this get child's method i am passing an object name and i'm converting the object name into lower case and then i'm using the get global describe method which will return me a map on that map i'm calling the get method and passing the object name so this will return me an s object type and on the s object type i'm calling the get describe method to get the metadata description of that s object so whatsoever object name you will pass it will get the metadata description of that s object and then i'm getting the child relationships of it iterating over it and printing the information of the various child relationship so depending upon the object name you are passing to this method this method will tell you the child relationship of that specific object so if i'm calling the get child method and passing the contact over here it is going to return me all the child relationships of the contact here you go so this time it is returning me all the child relationship of the contact and the proof is you can see the field name on child is contact id similarly let's pass a custom object for example in our org we have a classroom custom object so let me pass the classroom and let me click on execute so classroom is actually related to student so there must be one student over here let here you can see student so student is a child of classroom the field name of on student is class 
and the relationship name is students underscore underscore r. So now we have made with the help of get global describe, we have made a method which can dynamically create an S object type and hence dynamically can fetch the metadata description of that specific S object type. That marks the end of this video. See you soon in the next video. Till then, thank you and take care.